What's up, YouTube? Team Shenanigans here, Justin and Matt, and we're just gonna bring y'all a discussion video. I haven't put up a video in a little while, and we're just gonna talk talk about the current meta, top decks, just our opinions on the game and future releases. So let's start with current meta. Uh, we just had nationals. Dope one. Yeah. Dope one. <laughs> <laughs> who, who saw that coming? When everybody and their grandmother is playing dope for real. Like seriously, my, my grandmother plays dope. Yeah, mine does too. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anyway, let's let's start out with our opinion on the top decks. Uh, Matt, wanna go first? Uh, sure. Uh, my first thought, of course, is Dote, which our grandmothers both play. Turns out, didn't know that before the video started. Um, it's it's a good deck. It's got all the components it needs to work really well. It doesn't hurt that seriously everyone is running Dote. So. You know, its chances of winning are higher, that's good. It's still, like, you know, not to take away from the fact that it is a really good deck. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a great deck. My second would be, I don't know popular of an opinion this will be, but uh, Aqua Force. I think it's a really good deck. It's a really solid deck. Um, maybe not in the future, but right now there's still a lot of decks running 10k vanguards. Yeah. Uh, including most of my decks. Uh, and Aquaforce just really takes advantage of that, especially with that crazy turn two rush that they can do. They get a Basil and a couple of other grade twos in their hand. They're pushing you for four attacks on turn two. It really hurts. And it doesn't get any easier, especially mm -hmm. when, you know, you're later on in the game and they're hitting you with these small attacks. And I know my biggest problem is, oh, well, I don't want to guard this small attack with the 5k shield. I'll just let it go through. And... Now, the next thing I know, I'm at 5 damage. It's yeah, they're going to hit a trigger on that Vanguard attack, and oh yeah. crap, they just critted me. Now I have to guard this last one that's going to take like 20k shields right. to get the power there. So that's my opinion on why I think Aqu Aqu Force is really good right now. Um, my third one would be Coco, Solus OTT. Uh, this is partly because I've played against it a lot. <laughs> a my, lot. Our, our teammate, my wife, that's her deck. That's what she plays, and it's very hard to beat her. It's just, the deck pushes for high numbers, uh, just as high numbers as really any other deck out there. Yeah. And... It can hit everything. It's yeah, it's it's got ways to hit even, you know, cross rides. Yeah. Plus there's the fact that through the card's skills and stuff, with, you know, you've got Dark Cat and Coco, and yeah. all of those, it, it gets really yeah. stupid advantage. If, if you play it right, you play cards from your hand, and it doesn't cost you anything. You never lose hand advantage, mm -hmm. ever. It's, it's retarded. I always feel like it's an uphill battle playing yes. against that tech. So yes. uh, what are you thinking? Um, I'm I'm gonna have to say number one deck in the format. It's got to be dope. It just has to. Um, we're in a cross rod format. You know, uh, it, news, news. Uh, <laughs> and dope's the best cross rod right now of the two. MLB's not a cross rod. It's not. It's not. There are two cross rods right now. Two. And Shadow Paladin is just not that good, in my opinion. It's, it's not that good. Um, some people might yell at me for that. I don't know. It's not that good. Dope's number one deck. Like like Matt said, it, it helps that everybody's playing it. And But it, it would be winning tournaments, even if everybody wasn't playing it. We're just saying it's winning everything right now because everybody's playing it. Our grandmas just, are really, really good. <laughs> really, I, I I've never it. beaten them. I know. I hate my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, just and just like reflecting back the last format, Gold Paladin. Everybody was playing Gold Paladin. Mm -hmm. Now Gold Paladin's not winning anything. There's still a few people playing Gold Paladin, but it's not winning anything because everybody and their grandma isn't playing Gold Paladin right now. But uh, my second deck has to be Solus OTT. Just like like we said, uh, our teammate, my wife, she she plays it, and when the deck's built right and played by a good player, it's next to unbeatable, honestly, especially. If you're using a 10k Vanguard, like cross rides can go up against it, no problem. That yeah, that's a pretty good match to watch. But 10k Vanguards just have a really hard time against it, because you're basically going beat down deck against beat down deck, and they're gonna outlast you through their hand advantage. And my third pick, I don't, I don't even like this deck, but I gotta pick it. Uh, I'm an avid Alfred beat player, but I'm gonna have to say the my third deck's an MLB. I don't feel like it's a great deck. It's an okay deck. 
the only reason I think it's one of the tops right now is because, let's be honest, in Vanguard, you've got a couple decks doing better than everybody else, and all the other ones are just fighting for position. Everything's mm -hmm. pretty even, besides Grand Blue. And, <laughs> and <laughs> not saying anything against Grand Blue, they just have no support whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, anyway, MLB. You know, just because you get the Blaster Blade, Blaster Dark and Soul, it's swinging for 12. It's 12k defensive and offensive, and it's swinging for 2 crit the rest of the game. And that's what really puts that deck over the edge, because where you're at 4 damage, you're like, oh, I can just hope they don't crit me with the Vanguard attack, and I can guard everything else. Uh-uh, you're screwed. Uh, and so, let's move on to overplayed decks. <laughs> All right. Let's well, repeat what we just said. <laughs> uh, overplayed decks number one. I would have to say dope. Yeah. Because my grandmother is a huge bandwagoner. She used to play Gold Paladin. She plays. Uh, she she, she pretty much just like if something's winning tournaments, she's gonna play it. And the more she plays it, and other people's grandmothers, and right. I guess them too, you know. My my grandma played Duke. You're you just played Helm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Helm. Yeah. It's more mm -hmm. fun. She looked like a pillow Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Could not get enough of it until Doe came out. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... No, it's just, like, it's just a big snowball effect. Someone tops with it, more people jump on. It keeps winning more and more and more people jump on. And, honestly, I'm kind of getting really tired of playing against it. Whether it be, yeah. you know, in person or a lot. I play a lot online. Yeah. So, I run into a lot of that. To be honest, it's not an unbeatable deck. It's not, like, this... Oh, we're just butt hurt because we're because it wins everything. We're just butt hurt because I'm tired of going up against it two or three times in one tournament. It's I want to face other decks. That's there's other good decks out there. Other people can play, but no no offense to people that play the deck. It's just, mm -hmm. Everybody's playing the deck. Yes. Another one would be his last top deck there, MLB, <laughs> which that's another kind of I don't know how to. How to put this, but it's just like a, a lot of people play it, and it's it's good, just like many other decks are good, and it's got its big perks that constant 12k two crit, and that happens a decent amount of the time thanks to uh, Wiggle Brave, yeah, St Starfall Trumpeter, yes. So it, like it's a good deck, but I don't know that it's as good. As it as it like people tend to make it out to be just based on how many people are still playing it. Yeah. It's no coincidence somebody builds it and then a week later they're trying to sell it or trade it. Yeah. <laughs> all I all I see <laughs> on trade forums are selling MLB. They've got people post their trade binders. It's four copies of MLB. Their Bet blaster years. darks there. Their yeah. Their star calls. So it's just like I don't know. I like it. It's a cool deck. I played against it. I played against some really good players playing it, and lost to those really good players playing it. But I don't know if it's as good as people tend to make it out to be. Yeah. Number three. I had something on the top of my head. I can't remember it right now. So you go ahead. Okay. Uh. Mine has has to be Dote. Dote, MLB, and Shadow Paladin. So I just, Matt said everything needs to be said about Dote and MLB, but those are my top two. And then Shadow Paladin, because I feel like Shadow Paladin's exactly like Dote. I go to a tournament, I'm going to face at least two to three Shadow Paladin players, and I don't get it, because the deck's not winning. It's it's a slightly consistent deck, it's okay, you're sitting on a 13k Vanguard, you get the ride chain off, but it doesn't have enough perks, and it has, it can build a bunch of advantage, but it just runs out of steam. And I play, uh, Alfred Beat's my main deck. I've been playing Royal Paladin since I started the game. And what hurts me, my number one concern going up against a Phantom Blaster Overlord deck is the Masquerade. I need to kill that Masquerade because that's making 20k columns against my Vanguard. You're a 13k Vanguard, I'll get to that later. I'm killing these Masquerades right now. And you're going to run out of steam late in the game. You're going to run out of Counter Blast for your main and your Machas and all that. And all i got to do is just not let your Cursed Lancer hit. You're not unflipping any damage on me. <laughs> no. And uh, so that's my top three. Just Dope, MLB, and PBO. So.
So let's go on to underrated decks. <sighs> this is my soapbox, I guess. My number one underrated deck, which I do have a little bit of bias because it is my main deck, uh, is Great Nature. Um, namely, the... Fish. Uh, I was just talking earlier about how if Zoo gets a new clan, it should be fish-related because... <laughs> Why would I? I don't think fish should be in Megalanica. Megalanica, they should be in Great Nature with all the other animals. So <laughs> if fish get a clan, Great Nature or Zoo, make it happen. But um, I love Great Nature a lot. It's my main deck. I have so much fun playing it, especially with this new support out from Set Eight. And everyone tends to overlook it, mainly because, and I'll be very blunt with this, most of the players using Great Nature are terrible. Yeah. Every yes. deck. Yes. I see online, not every deck, I won't say every deck, because there are, are a lot of really good players with it, And uh, but most of the decks that I see online are just, honestly, trash. It They've got, you know, four Leopold, four Binoculus Tiger, four Monoculus Tiger, four... Magnet Croc. Yeah, four Magnet Croc, four Compass Lion, four uh, Silver Wolf, just... Trying to get as beat down as possible, and uh, some people seem to have gotten the idea that Great Nature is this big beat down deck, and you're supposed to get beefy and hit for really big numbers, and then just like let things die off at the end phase because they've served their purpose of being powerful. But the thing is, that's not true. Other decks can do big numbers, and they don't have to, you know, kill yeah. off their units. You can't match other decks doing that, and that's why those players are building Great Nature, building them incorrectly, yeah. losing a lot with them, getting fed up, and selling them off. Everybody's selling Great Nature, just like MLP. Everybody. I hear, right, I hear so much online, you know, oh, why are you running the hamsters? The hamsters are terrible. Oh, Duckbill is just a one-time draw, what are you doing with that? But the thing is, is those cards were what was designed to make the clan work. The whole point is not that you can boost things and make them more powerful. If that was the point, it would have been plus 5,000, and then they die. It The whole point is, you've got these cards that boost up your other units and make them more powerful, make them able to hit those numbers that they need to, but you've also got the things like the hamsters, the duckbills, you've got parrot, that mitigate those losses that you're taking from losing your units, because great nature can't get up the resources they need to just constantly be replacing units every turn. If you try that, you're just going to run out of hand or run out of field, and you will lose. You're not going to beat anything doing that. And you've got to be prioritizing those counterblasts for the hamsters and for Leopold's Limit Break is another huge thing. You shouldn't be relying on Leopold's Limit Break you know, later in the game just to bring back those units that are dying. You shouldn't be just you know, killing off your Geograph Giants because you just boosted it up to 18 using Leo and Tiger and it's served its purpose, but you want to bring it back for next turn. You should be killing off the Grade 2 or Grade 1 Hamske. Counter Blast 2, not only do you get that hamster back, but you also get another one for extra shield or mm -hmm. if you intercept away your other one, you've got something to replace it there. And that, I think, is the biggest issue I've seen and one reason I think that Great Nature's been so underrated is just because people aren't playing it well. And, uh, sorry, that kind of went on for a while. Uh, and you're, like, constantly plusing against me. Like, I believe it was turn two in one game with your Great Nature. You, like, plus three off uh, using the duck bill, the starter's effect, and then another duck mm -hmm. bill. And uh, it was on a Hamsuke. Or, you it's just, almost always on Hamsuke. Oh, my gosh. It's just ridiculous, ridiculous. Love the deck. I'd love to see more people playing it. I'd love to see more people playing it well. Yeah. Uh, it just, in my opinion, doesn't get the recognition it deserves. Not to say that it could, like, you know, that it's the best deck. But it's a lot of fun. It could be doing a lot better than it has been. Right. Opening next week, Matt's Dojo of Great Nature. <laughs> <laughs> Sensei. Um, anyway, uh, deck two? Deck underrated? two. Let's see. As far as underrated decks go, um, there's a lot. It's hard to pick one. Yeah. You go ahead and do one of yours. I'll think about uh, it. My, my top one right now, especially because I love the deck, Tachikaze. Let, let me tell you my story about how I picked up the Tachikaze deck. 
Um, back when they were bad, and you were just running four death wrecks, and you know before all this set eight support and four giga wrecks, and oh, it's terrible. Um, I picked up the entire deck, four perfect guards and all, for a secret rare card card. -y. Thank you, Yu-Gi-Oh, for being useful. <laughs> <laughs> and I waited. I just waited. I never really played the deck because I hated the way it ran, but I just said, I want to run Raptors when they come out. So I put it in a deck box and just left it there. Set 8 rolls out. Guess what? I'm running the Raptor Ride Chain with four Colonels and four Dark Rex. I don't give a crap what anybody says about running uh, nothing but Colonels and Dark Rex is bad. <sighs> just play against me, and it, you'll see how bad <laughs> it is. Because... The deck's so good right now. Terrible. It's so good. <laughs> if uh, if you get the ride chain off right, you're plussing all the way up to grade three, and you don't have to use. A lot of people have the misconception that you have to use Raptor Colonel's limit break. The games I win, I never have to use this limit break because I just dark wrecks. I'm a dark wrecks you all day, son, all day. You're really you, well. <laughs> you you attack with your first rear guard column. Attack with Vanguard. You wait till they're at four damage. You wait till they're at four damage. They're going to block the Vanguard attack. Limit break. Retire. Uh, the two rear, the three rear guards. At rest. Ride the Dark Rex. Any triggers that you got off the Vanguard, put it on the unattacking, the uh, rear guard column that hasn't attacked yet. Second, uh, Twin Drive. You're just adding cards to your hand, putting all the triggers on the last rear guard column, and that's that's usually final turn right there. I, I love that deck so much. Um, number two of uh, underrated decks. Let's see. I have to say... Huh. God, I, I'm having a hard time with this, yeah. too. I could think of some earlier, but suddenly um, put me on the spot. Uh, God, I'm going to say Neonectar in general, honestly. Like, um, before the Set 8 support came out, um, Neo Nectar was already winning just with basic Laurel mm -hmm. and uh, Maiden of Trailing Rose builds. And now uh, they still have that build that they can default back to. They have Musketeers, Arboros Dragon. I know that's one of your favorite decks. I do love it. And uh, Neo Nectar in general is just a, a really underrated clan. Like, mm -hmm. all, all three builds I can think of are really good and uh, underrated. I'm going to have to say Bermuda Triangles now. They kind of dropped off the face of the planet. Um, Dazzling Divas is coming out next month, and they're going to get even better. Uh, but right now, this, I think everybody's just bored of them. They got one set of support. You can build like three or four different good good decks with it, and uh, everybody's just kind of burned out on them. But they're still really good. They can really win and really surprise some people. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to move on to the next topic? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, under supported decks. <laughs> this one's easy, especially um, the first couple. Right. Grand Blue, Mega Colony. And Great Nature. Great Nature, yeah. <laughs> I do love it. I love the cards it's got, but I don't know. It's It's got kind of an underwhelming mechanic as far as, you know, having to lose cards. And it does have the cards, you know, it's more about consistency than power, I guess. But the thing is, all, those, all these other decks are getting power. <laughs> so I just wish that they'd give Great Nature a little bit extra to, ca to catch up. But, of course, not before Grand Blue and Mega Colony, because, man. God. Grand Blue, you're, you'll never see the light of day again. Ever. And with these new lock skills coming out, Mega Colony is just... I don't know. Very gone the way of Nubatama. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's sad. I love them. I'm a big zoo player. I've got Mega Colony built, Great Nature. I've got Arboros Dragon trying to get Musketeers. So anything that could make Mega Colony better would be a great thing for me. But yeah. I don't really see that. It makes yeah. me sad. Um, so I guess that's it for like the meta discussion mm -hmm. of our segment. Moving on to upcoming releases and how they will change the meta. Uh, later this month, set nine. Finally, finally. Yes. Get ready for more cross rides, people. <laughs> You're gonna have gold paladin cross ride decks. Yes, golds will be back. Mm -hmm. Narakami's gonna. Narcomi's not going away, people. This is just the beginning. Yeah. Good God. Uh, you'll get get ready to see uh, some Gold Paladin cross ride decks. Those aren't going to be as popular as the Blood, though. You're going to see a lot of the Blood and mm -hmm. um, all the Aqua Force people that really uh, bought up all the Aqua Force cards and then got tired of the deck are going to be throwing that back together for the cross ride because the, 
That cross rod's ridiculous. It's good. It's, uh, I'm, I know, I'm looking forward to, basically, I'm just looking for, I'm gonna be building liberators later, so I'm looking to get some marks and maybe a platinazzle, I don't know, because I don't wanna have to struggle to get all the liberator marks, so I'll just mm -hmm. have those for a little while and trade them off later, and I need, I need Blaster Blade Spirits, because I'm really looking forward to taking those into decks, I, I really like that card. I really like that card. Uh, what are you looking forward to out of the uh, set? I'm looking for the same thing that Christy, his wife, is looking for. <laughs> We're both trying oh, to build God. Metatron, which I've been testing it out, proxying the cards. Um, I've been having a lot of fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be really good. You get a field with the Grade 2 No Seal and the Pegasus Boosters, and that deck can do beautiful, beautiful things. So... I expect to see that. Prob you probably won't see that quite as much as the, uh, in, in the cross our, rides, but... It's going to be big in our area, because you're building it, Chris is building it, and uh, our our friends over at Team Winning, every team member is bu yes. building it. Every, lots of people are planning on building that right here at our locals, so I'll get to play against it a lot <laughs> while matches. I'm playing with it a lot. Uh, is... we'll see if I can come up with a new uh, build for my Great Natures, too, come set nine. Oh, yeah. There's the series of that. cards that retire into each other, the grade 1, 2, and 3. There's a cool thing with a loop with Bison you can do to essentially loop them all out of the deck in one turn once you've got your limit break. So I'll be testing that out, see how that works, see how it compares to my current deck. Also, Polaris is coming out, which requires its own entire build. That is the time when maybe you might want to use stands in a great nature deck. Stands do not belong in Leopold. I, I would go into detail, but maybe I'll do a whole video on Great Nature later because I don't need to go off on another rant about them. <laughs> we'll have a Great Nature rant video. <laughs> so, but Polaris is definitely going to be a different build. Uh, it requires more, kind of a different strategy. So I'll see about building that too, testing that. But It's pretty good. It's, eh. We'll see. Yeah. So uh, then after set nine, guess, guess what we get, Matt? Break rods. Break rides. I don't break, break rides. rides. No. I, I, don't, I don't want break rides either. <laughs> Wait, unless Great Nature gets one. In case <laughs> I want break rides. Uh, but guess uh guess who's back? Mermaids. Mermaids. Daz Dazzling Divas. Um, they get their second set of support, and jump ahead of everybody else. <laughs> um, they kind of I, I think they sunk the Grand Blue ship. Probably. I, I think they did it. Mm. They uh they pulled the court. The sirens. Yeah, but they killed them. Singing for them, the pirates just run off right into the rocks. I thought they were undead pirates already. They were they now they're redead pirates. <laughs> I, I guess so, but um, they're gonna be pretty ridiculous for a little while. Honestly, I see it being really broke when it first comes out. Everybody, people are gonna be jumping on it because oh, break rod mechanic, mm -hmm. and it's coming out before everything else. Mm -hmm. And everybody loves Bermudas. They just get bored of them pretty quick. They're very pretty cards. Yeah, they're really pretty, but. I know, uh, I know Christy's going to be building them because she likes Bermudas, and uh, they're going to be really good. they got some really good effects, but I see it kind of fading off in the distance pretty quick, though, with like the Liberators and Eradicators and Genesis all coming out in set 10. So I don't think they'll last, but I think they'll be pretty good, pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, and then next, we get the Oracle and Nova Grappler booster, extra boosters. Finally! Thank you, Booster <laughs> I just picked off all my Nova Grappler stuff, <laughs> save a couple of perfect guards. Thanks. Um, <laughs> and uh, but here's my question. Um, and Matt brought this up earlier. Why is Tsukiyomi not reprinted? And they reprinted all the other Oracle stuff. Why not reprint Tsukiyomi? Because Bushiro, you know it was a mistake to make the Grade 2 and Grade 3 oh, both God. triple rares in the same oh. set. Why? Why? Why is that Grade 2 not a double? Why? Um, so, I think that's really the only notable things through that. And I'm a Tarasu reprint. It's gonna... Yeah. And their Perfect Guards are getting reprinted. It's, it's more just a reprint set, and it's gonna help prices go down. Because Twin Blader's $22 yes, it would be very reason. nice to see a reprint of Twin Blader. Yes, why is Twin Blader $22? And Chocolat is uh, 14 I think? I have no idea. I don't, uh, I don't pay attention but, to the Think Tank. <laughs> Other than uh, having to lose to it a lot. But, uh, you have anything to say on those? Not really. 
Just free print set, what can you say? I might see if I'll pick up Nova Grapplers, but probably not. They're, they're pretty fun. They're, they're, yeah. I've, he's got them. Uh, I've played against them. So, yeah. they, they, they can get pretty annoying. I, so. yeah. I just get kind of burnt out on them pretty quick. Like, I need Twin Bladers. I only have one. Um, so then, moving on to more break rides. So we're going break ride, old shit, break rides. And, <laughs> um, Liberators and Eradicators. Two sides to the same coin, really, because mm-hmm. Liberators are eventually, with the rest of the support coming out and everything, mm-hmm. with Alfred and Liberator Garmore, mm-hmm. which, how's that a bad card? I don't know, people on Pojo were saying it's a bad card. I don't know, Pojo. Um, Liberators help you swarm the field and boost up their units. Eradicators just annihilate the, your opponent's field and boost their units for doing so. And it's just going to get pretty ridiculous and expect to see a lot of uh, Narukami in general, not just Eradicators, but they're getting mm-hmm. so much support. So much support. It's You're going to be seeing a lot of that. But I myself have been building Liberators because I love Royal Paladins. I love the new... It's For me, it's not, oh, Gold Paladin. It's, oh, my old Royals with new heart work. And I updated effects. Alfred's finally 11k. <laughs> but um, I'm going to... long enough. Yeah, I'm going to have to get three or four of the Liberator Trial Decks because I need the Gantz slots. And Astro Blade Liberator is only printed in the Trial Deck and as SP in Set 10 for some reason. Don't understand that. But uh, are you looking forward to Eradicators and Liberators? Are you looking forward to playing against them? No. <laughs> right now, I'm not sure if I'm going to build anything out of Set 10. I've been looking at stuff. Uh... We'll see where it takes me. I've got I've got some time before that. It comes out in what, like October? Yeah. Okay. So the trial decks come out like the beginning of October and then set tens a couple weeks later. Okay. So that I've Ge- got some time to figure out. Genesis. Yeah, I forgot about Genesis. That's another oh, yeah. deck my wife's building. Genesis are honestly what Oracle should have been all along. They utilize uh they utilize the soul and they just draw like crazy and That'd it's be. it's all about um, soul charging, soul charging. Now soul blast and rape someone's face. Freaking uh god, what's the I want a gig may or whatever I don't know, can't say the name right. But it just retires the front row at cost of soul blast eight. Hmm. Retarded, retarded. And uh, just wait till set eleven when Fortune is coming out and you get an extra. Twin drive at the cost of discarding one of the cards you twin drove. If you didn't like it, it wasn't a trigger. Send it to drop zone. <laughs> I'll have to uh, see shit. more on those. Yeah, you have to look into Genesis. I haven't looked that much at them, I gotta admit. <sighs> they're, so. they're really good. And, uh, r- really good. <laughs> um, so, uh, in closing, I guess that's all the releases we're gonna talk about now. Um, in closing, let's, uh, how do you think all these new sets, all these new cards are gonna affect the meta? Like, let's say two weeks after set ten's been out, what do you think is going to be winning? Well, you're definitely going to be seeing a lot of eradicators, definitely. Yeah. Uh, any of the decks really that have gotten their break rides at that point. Yeah. You got eradicators, liberators, the prisms, because it's they're really good. It's really nice to suddenly, well, if you're the one playing them, it's really nice to suddenly have. You know, that Vanguard sitting there 10,000 points higher, plus, you know, you get the added benefits from these extra effects. Yeah. I'm, so. I think uh, we're going to see cross rides start to die down once the break rides come out, especially after set 10 and then going into set 11. After set 11, break rides are going to almost be extinct, really. I mean, not break rides, uh, cross rides are going to almost be extinct, really, because... People are going to put down do. they're going to put down PBO, uh, the blood isn't going to see as much play, just because people are going to put those decks down, because now we have break rides, we have this new mechanic we're going to swarm to, just like when Limit Break came out. That's what everybody did, they flopped to the new cards. So, uh, just like Matt said, you're going to see a lot of Liberators, Eradicators, Prisms, and, uh, but also, like, a few people, I think a few of the the cross ride decks you're going to stick around. I think there's still going to be a couple boat players laying around. Uh, a couple Narukami players still using the blood, maybe. You'll see me playing and, Great Nature. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, and Metatron. Uh, 
And um, oh, the the Aqua Force cross ride. I think that's going right. to still see some play until they get their new support. What is it? Set eleven. Set eleven. They've got yeah. that ride chain coming out. It's yeah, really that's, good. That's when they get their break ride. So up until then, you're going to see uh, Glory Mouse run decks, and I think those decks are going to be pretty good. A lot of people are saying they don't like them. But I think I can see it winning a lot because you have to guard with grade zeros if it's a limit break, right? Mm -hmm. No perfect shields, no grade twos. And uh, that's going to really be a pain in the ass if you're not expecting it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know I'm still going to be playing Alfred B and my Tachikaze uh, until set 11. My Tachikaze deck is going to stay the same. Set 11, I might try the new uh, the, the break ride for Tachikaze. But. Um, I'm going to build Liberators, and that's pretty much it. I'm building Liberators. Christy's going to build Metatron from set 9 and Genesis from set 10. And uh, that's all our decks that are going to change. And you're going to build Metatron. and build Metatron. My fiance is currently building uh, Dark Regulars. That's yeah. for way in the future. So set 12? that'll be set 12. Oh my god. Hello 2015. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a while, so we don't have to worry about that uh, anytime soon. Yeah, but um, I guess that's where we'll stop this video, guys. We're going to have some more discussion videos coming to y'all and uh, hopefully get some more people into it. But here lately, it's just been really hard to round everybody up, and we got to coax the wives to get on camera. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, wives, this guy's getting married soon. I am. Yeah, no, uh, I'm getting married next month, so that'll uh, be... It'll be fun. It's not that bad. Don't worry. It's not that bad. But um, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more videos from Team Shenanigans. And uh, this is just Justin and Matt signing out.